Hello all, welcome to lecture number 5 of our Linux series. Now I know you guys are very excited because we have done CentOS in a full screen mode in our previous video and it looks really great, very good experience, no laggy experience. So yes, I know you are very excited to get started but before you get started, I'm introducing this lecture and I have noted down few points that you really need to know before you get started. These points are the result of my experience because I have been using Linux from like last 10 years. So yes, these are the points that I wish if I um, knew before starting my Linux journey. So let's talk about these points. So first of all, it's an open source. So when I say open source, that means the code of this is freely available. And not only it is freely available, you can also redistribute it or you can also modify this code which is really a brilliant feature out there. You cannot do this for Windows and other operating systems because they are not open source, which is why we prefer open source. I'll give you one more example of open source. Uh, there are more free open source tools. Like for example, you must have heard about Firefox, one of the most amazing browser that we all have been using from quite a long time. But now notice, Mozilla Firefox is also an open source, which is why there is a flavor of Linux for hackers that is called as Kali Linux. In that, Kali Linux was packaging Mozilla Firefox. They renamed it, they, uh, they changed the branding of it and they named it as IC Weasel. It was happening long back, which means if you have anything that is open source, you can modify it and you can redistribute it as per your convenience. So this is the biggest freedom that you get when you're working on open source projects. Second one is the root user. Now, root user is like a king of all the users. It has the highest access rights. It can create, modify, or it can delete the users. You can understand it like root user supremacy is the biggest, biggest in the Linux. So root user can also uh, make the changes into the system configuration file. But maybe you must have created any another user or if you will create any other user, it must not have that much privileges as much as the root user has. But when you get a lot of authority, the power comes with a risk of getting vulnerable as well. Which is why I'm telling you that don't give root user to anyone. If anybody wants to work, you just create a new user and give him the credential of new user. Avoid giving him the root user. You know, I've been working on cloud as well from quite a long time. So at that time, you gotta have to create new users. If you will give root user to everyone, then imagine everyone is running in a supremacy that they can do anything with anyone which means they can create, delete, or they can do anything with that account in a scenario when you have some of your website or server running over there. And it's just not about Linux. If you are using anywhere, even into the cloud, people are giving IAM users to other because they don't want to give all the access to everyone. So this is one thing that you need to care about. With great power comes the great responsibility. The next point is that you need to avoid using space in naming files or directories. Now this is very important thing. I'll tell you why. Imagine the name of the file is file or the complete name is file or and if I'll do the CD of it or if I'll try to navigate towards that file, it will be pretty hard for me. So maybe I can make it easier if my file name is file or I'll name it as file underscore or. Now if I want to, uh, you know, catch this file by writing its name or anything like that, it will be very easier for me because it's very hard to you know remember the spaces or to predict it i'm not saying that it is impossible but it is going to be tricky for you if you are going to use the spaces while naming the directories or anything like that that's why i told you that avoid using space in naming file or directories that is one of the main and important thing which is why now i'm habitual even if i'm working on windows i usually name let's say uh, the name of the file is new file so i often rename it as new underscore file so this is one thing that you need to take care of it's in my habit now eventually if you'll be using linux more it will be in your habit as well next thing is linux is case sensitive case sensitive means when i say case sensitive it means that the name of the file is let's say new file and n is capital and then ew and file is happening over there so small n is not equal to capital n or maybe if you have given the name of the file with capital n then that is not equal to small n 
So this is one thing that you need to take care about in Linux that Linux has some case sensitivity parameters. This is one thing. Another thing is kernel. People talk a lot about Linux kernel and into a lot of interview questions, they'll be asking you whether Linux kernel is an operating system or how things are happening over there. So you need not to get confused over there because you can assume that the Linux kernel is uh, like a software, you can say, like suppose you're passing on some commands that is going on and deci getting decided with the user and then uh, you know it is taken towards the hardware and then it is actually giving the commands on how the hardware should respond to the certain requests given by the user if you want to read about it in detail i have taken out an amazing video about what is kernel you can just go through it and uh, you know take a deep knowledge about what kernel is but for now you need to understand that linux kernel is not an operating system it's just deciding that how your hardware is being used when it is requested by the user how much ram should be there how much power should be uh, should be gathered from the ram or like uh, any kind of processor or memory so this is the main work of kernel so you need not to get confused linux kernel and linux these are two different things linux kernel is not an operating system so this is uh, what you need to take care about linux is very flexible one thing that i love about linux after exploring cloud more as well uh, that you know you can connect with linux anywhere around you just need to get SSH keys and with the help of PuTTY and these kind of software, you can easily get the access of any system sitting around the world. Or maybe you can fix their systems or if there is any bug or if you or if you have some files to host over the server or anything like that, it gets very easy to work upon it. Uh, so yes, Linux has this flexible approach of getting connected with each other. Next point that I wanted to talk about that CLI and GUI. Now this is very important. We have done GUI installation in this series. GUI is graphical user interface, which means all the graphics that you see, all the interface that you see of the softwares, they looks great, right? But when you're working into the production time, maybe at some company or maybe at your job, you'll get the access of CLI. Now what is CLI? CLI is command line interface. That means the whole operating system is without any graphic at all. You just have the terminal and you gotta have to run and make things done with CLI. Now CLI is widely used when you are using multiple operating systems for hosting different different servers individually on and in this era you use load balancers that means uh, you're using multiple machines which is really a great thing out there. Uh, so for that, GUI is not going to help. Imagine opening up a lot of GUIs, a lot of graphical user interface that is going to be very tidy rather than that. People prefer using CLI for all the things that you need to tweak inside your operating system. And trust me, when you are done with this course, it will be very easier for you. Last thing is manual. Now, one of the reasons that I have learned in my life in last 10 years go ahead and mess around with this operating system as much as you can but when you feel like you're stuck go ahead and try to find the manual there is always a manual of all the tools or anything that you are using on linux the, you have the manual of it so you need not to be scared before running anything or before trying anything install as much packages as much you want like we have installed a lot of packages into our last video as well just to make our linux full screen so you need not to be scared about anything at all. The community is very good. It's very vast. There are n number of forums where you'll find n number of solutions. That's how I research and that's how I serve the content. So yes, these are the things that you will remember while learning Linux. Your Linux journey is going to be really easier. And if you'll keep a bigger approach that what you want to do ultimately about from the Linux, it will be very easier for you to, you know, put your hands on the Linux. So these are the top things that I really wanted if I knew before starting the Linux, but then I really don't want to waste your time. That's why I've utilized my experience to curate this point. In next video, we will learn more about taking the remote connection of our Linux operating system. But that's it for this video. I hope you are enjoying my Linux series. Let me know in comment section if I have any kind of improvements to do. But that's it for this video. I'll see you again tomorrow with another video.